Good afternoon everyone. I'm Chef Julia. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be making some multigrain waffles and uh, we'll also try to make a pancake with the waffle mixture. So if for some reason you didn't have a waffle maker, you could also try my batter and pancakes. I have never tried that before, so if it doesn't work out, I apologize in advance, but we won't know until we try it. So um, part of my recipe comes with a blueberry topping. We can call it a blueberry compote, and I'm going to be using some frozen blueberries. I'm going to get it started now so it has time to cook while we're making the waffles. I've used fresh blueberries before, but in this time where you might not be going to the store as often, you might have some frozen blueberries available easier than going to buy some fresh ones. So uh, frozen blueberries work great. Uh, I noticed that some of the stores I've been to have a limit on how much fresh fruit you can buy. Hi Pam, I see you watching. Thanks for watching the video. So start with your blueberries. We're going to make the compote first. It's so easy. It starts with blueberries and then a couple of tablespoons of some kind of organic sugar. I'm using organic cane sugar, two tablespoons. You can use coconut sugar, date sugar, maple sugar. And can you believe how big this bag of sugar is? It's six pounds. I asked my husband to get a bag of organic cane sugar and he said that was the only size they had left. So I told him, I said, I don't really use that much sugar. It take, it's going to take me a year to use all that sugar, but eventually it will all get used. So I have the sugar in there. And uh, this is very simple. It's sugar, a little water. Sorry about that. A couple tablespoons of water. I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact for something like this. Hi, everybody. I see a lot of people coming on. Carolyn, Nancy Cerrone, and Kathy Brown is back. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, Nancy. Finally, you made it. Uh, I think Nancy's probably had this dish before because she came to one of the potlucks, and I think we served it at the potluck. Then we're going to throw in a little lemon. This is, I'm making the blueberry compote. We're going to put a little lemon juice in there. Up oh, there, I've got a seed in there. I'm going to pick it out. Oh, it's rapidly sinking to the bottom. Great. Well, I've got to find it because if I don't, somebody's going to have a big lemon seed in their mouth. All right, there it is. All right, I got it. So then we're going to, I'm going to drop the lemon on the floor. This is a comedy of errors. So I'm putting a little zest in. Not much. I'm just going to use the zest of this half lemon. So if you make a mistake, you just recover. I don't think uh, I've ever done anything as bad as dropping a whole chicken on the floor like Julia Child, but I haven't. I've come close, let me say that. Let's see, Kendra Kelly, hi Kendra, good to see you. Cindy Delgado, Carol Carter, thanks for coming on, I appreciate it. So I've got my blueberry compote cooking and I think I'm gonna move it to the back burner so it's kind of out of my way, but I wanted you to see it as I got started. It's nothing more than frozen blueberries with some lemon juice, a little cane sugar. You could use maple sugar, coconut sugar, any kind of sugar or dates whatever you want to do to sweeten it, but I'm going to give it to the back so it's kind of out of my way and I don't burn myself on this burner while I'm making some other things. I've got to turn this burner off as I'm saying that. So um, we've got the blueberries going and I'm going to turn that down to a simmer and just let it simmer for a while. Get a spoon and stir it up a little bit and that's going to reduce down and make our sauce. We don't need any uh, complicated sauce. We don't need anything. Oops, my burner shut off. Sorry about that. We don't need any more than anything more than some good fruit. And if you don't have frozen fruit and you had some fresh fruit, you could use that too. So use what you have. And if you don't have any fruit at all, you can use maple syrup. So I've got my waffle iron heating up. You can probably see it back here. And so we'll have that ready when we're ready with our waffle batter. So I hope everyone's doing well. I think uh, some people are starting to get cabin fever maybe. It's a beautiful day, the weather's nice. Uh, let's see, hi Renee, nice to, nice to see that you're on the video. Uh, but I, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to get a little stressed out about being at home, not having 
the ability to hang out with family. It's the weekend. Normally we'd be doing something, going out with friends, going out to dinner, you know, and it's just kind of like here we are, another weekend, here at home. So, you know, I think it, it gets a little bit, it's starting to get a little old for some people. So for this weekend, maybe make something special. Maybe make the multigrain pan, the multigrain waffles or pancakes. They're not hard to make. The ingredients can be found at the grocery store. I'm sure you could order them all online. Uh, the, the, one of the key ingredients is this, it starts with a seven grain waffle mix. This is a Bob's Red Mill. And I found this at uh, Central Market. Oh, Lisa writes on there. Lisa, we can Zoom during dinner. Yeah, that's a great idea, Lisa. In fact, um, I'm planning to have some kind of a, a virtual potluck on April the 1st. And if anybody wants to join, it's going to be a Zoom event where we can all come on Zoom at 7 o'clock on April the 1st and make something plant-based. Show us what you made and we'll all eat at the same time. So if you're interested in that, send me an email or leave a comment with your email so I can register you for that Zoom activity. But my friend Lisa Wright, who's a chef, she has a great idea. If you can't join your friends for dinner, sit at the table log into Zoom, have dinner with them, talk, have a good time. So let's see, oh it's uh, her son's birthday. Happy birthday Hunter. Okay, so we're going to get this started. Got my recipe here. We're going to put one cup of this uh, Bob's Red Mill pancake mix. Now you may think that it's silly that we're using a mix to make a mix, but it really does turn out well using this mix and so I use it. The person that inspired me to make this Pancake, this um, waffle mix was someone who came to one of my classes. Her name was Brenda Carney, and she came all the way from Louisiana to attend a cooking class. And um, she was telling me at the class, and she was with her, I think it was her sister, she was telling me at the class about a family event that they have every year. She owned, they, her family owns a big company, and every year they have some big get together, and they would make these big tubs of waffle batter and she was describing it and she said and it had this you know pancake mix and this and this flour and almonds and walnuts and she named all these things and she said it, it was delicious and I started thinking but hers was had dairy and eggs and different things in it so after she left I thought I bet I could make some kind of crazy concoction of all kinds of different flours and ingredients and nuts and turn it into some kind of waffle batter. So that's exactly what I did. So I came up with this, this strange waffle batter, but it, it works. So it starts with a Bob's Red Mill multigrain waffle batter, and then we're gonna add half a cup of whole wheat pastry flour. Whole wheat pastry flour is different from whole wheat flour. It's, uh, it's kind of fine and powdery. It's, it's what I use in my hippie banana bread and things like that, you'll see me um, mentioned whole wheat pastry flour, but that's the brand I use, and you can find it pretty easily at different places. So I put half a cup of that in there. Um, I'm going to use some almond meal or almond flour. I have Bob's Red Mill. Usually I buy it in the bulk section and um, <clears throat> Central Market or Whole Foods or somewhere, but right now a lot of bulk sections have been shut down. So this one is uh, in a bag. Hi, Tricia Gutierrez. Good to see you back. So I'm putting my fourth a cup of almond flour in here. We're going to use a tablespoon of baking powder. Now I know there's probably people already thinking, oh, I wonder if that could be made gluten-free. I wonder if you could substitute this or that. Yeah, sure. Uh, Bob's Red Mill makes this same batter, but they make a gluten-free version. So you can check that out. Now I can't tell you how it's going to turn out because I have not made a gluten-free version but I'm sure if you experiment and make it, you'll find out. Okay, it does use a little salt, but just a fourth of a teaspoon. Try not to put too much salt in the things that I make. That's not very much. It does have some cinnamon in it. So in this case, it only has um, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'll put two, two fourths in there. Now, if I was making it with chocolate, I would leave out the cinnamon and I would replace the cinnamon with some chocolate, some cocoa powder, or this is cacao from Trader Joe's. Uh, it's very concentrated, but 
it looks and smells exactly like Goody, uh, Ghirardelli cocoa powder that I buy for making brownies. So, you know, if you don't want, if you want to make chocolate waffles, put a fourth of a cup of cocoa powder instead of cinnamon. So somebody's asking a question. How much of the seven grain mix? Uh, I'll be posting the recipe after this is over, but it's a cup. So it's a cup of the pancake mix. So I've got the cinnamon in here. And then a key ingredient is um, chopped up walnuts. So I have some walnuts here. And they're just, they were just, you know, walnut halves and pieces I bought in the um, bulk section before all this stuff started. Now in my original recipe, it only called for a half cup of walnuts. Well, my friend PJ, who comes to a lot of my classes, PJ Sharer, she said that when they started making this at home, they doubled the walnuts. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then she said they liked it so much better. So the next time I made it, I doubled the walnuts. And I did like it better, so that's what I'm doing. Now, <clears throat> I, uh, ground up the walnuts in my food processor. So that's a good way to do it. If you don't have a food processor, you can just chop them really finely. Uh, they don't need to be made into a powder. You know, there's still a little bit of, you can see, you can, they're still, they still look like walnuts. So we don't want to turn it into walnut flour because we want it to have that little crunch or that little body texture in our finished waffle. So here are the dry ingredients. And like we do with anything that we bake, you want to be sure you mix up the dry ingredients really well. Somebody's saying hello. Linda Donahue, hello Linda. Sorry about having to look up through my glasses, but I can't see unless I look up or down. <laughs> Looking at that angle. Okay, so I got the dry ingredients in here. Now I have another bowl for the wet ingredients, just like we were baking. In case the wet ingredients are applesauce, and I'm using this organic applesauce. I bought this at Whole Foods, I believe, but you can use any brand. Uh, just a common everyday grocery store brand would work. And it takes half a cup. And if you didn't know it, one of these little containers is half a cup. So you just have to scoop it out of there. And that gives it some moisture because remember we're not putting eggs or butter or oil. So the typical pancake batter that you used to make, if you used to make it, or waffle batter usually has eggs and dairy in it. So this one doesn't. So we have to substitute something for liquid. So then we're also putting in some aquafaba. So aquafaba is the liquid from a can of chickpeas. Now you could use other beans. It doesn't have to be chickpeas, but chickpeas work really well. So um, I always have Trader Joe chickpeas around, and I end up, whenever I make hummus or something, I portion out the aquafaba in these little plastic cups. You can buy them in the grocery store. You can get them in bulk at Costco or Central Market. But I, uh, I portion out what I need in these little cups, so I know two tablespoons, four tablespoons. So that's my aquafaba in there, and then, I'm gonna put in some soy milk. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit and I have two cups of soy milk. And I'll show you the kind of soy milk that I use. It's a, not flavored in any way. It's just an organic, unsweetened soy milk. And Central Market, which is a HEB store in our area, has a really good soy milk and it tastes good. Not all soy milk tastes that great, so I would encourage you to shop around until you find a soy milk that you really like because um, I've tasted some and they are not that great tasting to me. Now somebody else may think it's fine, but you know, I like it to be, not have a real strong taste or not have too much sweetness added to it. So I'm gonna mix my wet ingredients with my dry ingredients, just like we do in baking. And instead of using the whisk, I'm going to use my spatula. I have a bigger one than this one. This one's a little puny. And I'm going to mix my batter, but in any time we make any kind of uh, cake batter, pancake batter, you never want to over mix batter because the more you mix it, the more gluten forms and the tougher it becomes. So if you've ever had a cake or pancakes or something 
that was supposed to be light and fluffy and delicious and you tasted it and it was real rubbery and texture was not right, it was probably because it was overmixed. So you see, I just mixed it until everything was combined. And it's, it's sort of uh, wet, sort of runny. Sorry, I'm looking the wrong way. It's sort of runny, so we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes while we talk about some things. Um, I want you to see the progress of the compote, the blueberry mixture. If you can see, I'm trying not to get in the steam. All right, so we have, this is cooking along and it's starting to thicken up. It still has a ways to go. What happens the longer we cook it is it reduces down and it turns into a thick, almost like a glaze. And you could cook it, you know, really long to get a true glaze out of it. So while we're waiting for the waffle batter to thicken up, we're gonna to try to make a pancake, because this is a good time to experiment with that. I really want that batter to get a little bit firmer before we start using it. So what I'm gonna do, it's like some blueberry compote got in my pan here. So I'm gonna heat up my trusty skillet with my blueberries. It's like a shell game here. So move one thing to make room for the other. All right, so I got my, my uh, skillet going. I'm not gonna put oil in it because I don't need to. Things don't stick to it that well. Usually, you know, I say that and this will be the time that everything sticks, but hopefully that won't happen. So this is, let's see, somebody else is on here. Janelle Jones, what does the chickpea juice do? Well, the aquafaba, which is water from beans, is used as a replacement for leavening agents like eggs or things that lighten up a batter. So for example, you could take aquafaba and you could actually whip it up like you would egg whites and make, um, what do you call them, macarons from them. You can use aquafaba to make uh, really light quiches and all kinds of different things. So you'd be surprised at how much leavening you can get from aquafaba from the um, chickpea liquid. So, um, you know, there are books written. I have a book on aquafaba recipes, a lot of them are desserts, but that's its purpose, is to lighten things up. So, you know, that's, um, we'll make our pancakes, and in the meantime, uh, we're going to let this thicken up a little bit, see if our pan is hot enough, we'll put a tiny bit of batter on there, and yeah, it didn't really sizzle, so while that's heating up a little bit more, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, this video is video number 12. <laughs> So we, there have been 11 other um, Facebook Live videos of various things. And so for those of you who've been watching, I can see your comments when they pop up. I might have to get up a little closer to look, but I can see them. Can you tell me one thing that you've made from the 11 cooking videos and what it was? So I'll know if anybody's out there actually making any of this stuff. So just out of curiosity, have you made anything? And if so, what did you make? No, nope, I'm not seeing anything. Nobody's making anything. Okay. Uh, Pam says, you've come a long way. Somebody made beans. What else? Hippie banana bread, all right. Okay, well, I think the pan's hot enough, but I appreciate that. And I am going to work on doing the best I can every time I do these. Let's see, is there another one? Pinto beans, apple crisp, jambalaya. All right, now I feel good. All right, so we're going to put our pancake in here, and I hear it sizzling. So when you make things like pancakes, you want to make sure you add them and the waffle too, you wanna to make sure you add them to something hot, otherwise they're not gonna work. Another hippie banana bread, sliders, all right. I made the apple crisp, I really want to make the barbecue tempeh, but I couldn't get tempeh. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I think some things are hard to come by. You know, the store shelves, uh, I tried to get tempeh at Central Market the other day. I actually braved the supermarket and went, and went out there and I was the only one in Central Market wearing a mask and gloves, and people were looking at me really funny too. 
and the tempeh was all gone. There was no tempeh. Let's see, is there anything else? I have high hopes, but not yet. Almond milk. Oh, yeah, you could use almond milk. Uh, it won't taste exactly the same as my version, but I'm sure it would be fine. I just like the soy milk doesn't have as strong of a taste. Okay, let's see. It's, it's cooking. I'm going to flip it in a minute. And so as we've been talking, I want to show you what's happened to the batter. Just in that few minutes, the pancake batter has thickened. I don't know if you can really tell, but I can tell that it's gone from being super watery to being thicker. So when you make this, be sure and let it rest for about, I'd say 10 minutes, because if you put it in your waffle iron when it's very liquid, it doesn't work as well. Okay, so my pancake, which isn't sticking terribly, but kind of, we're just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna turn the heat down so I don't burn it. And we're going to put our waffle batter in the waffle iron. So I've got my waffle iron here. I think you can all see it. I can see it in the screen. Uh, this is a Cuisinart waffle iron. It's one of those that flips over. It's like the kind that if you go to a hotel, you'll see it at the, the buffet where you can make your own waffles and hope that there's batter left. Usually there isn't because somebody's come in ahead of you and used it all. So um, it's that kind. It, it was uh, a little on the pricey side, so if you have just a regular one, it's fine. You don't have to have one of these fancy ones, but it does work really nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the amount I put in here. I'm going to put about not quite a cup of batter in here, and I'm going to flip the pancake because I can tell it's starting to hard dry on the edges. All right, so here's our pancake. Turned a nice brown color. That's a good sign. I kind of wrinkled it a little bit, but it's it'll probably taste fine even though it doesn't look perfect. So I'm gonna open up my waffle iron. Ooh, it's steaming hot. I'm gonna put almost a cup, but not quite a cup, of waffle batter in there. Now your waffle iron may have a different amount than what mine does. So, you know, that's how much I put. Because if you put too much waffle batter, in your waffle iron, what will happen is the waffle batter will start seeping up on the sides and it'll make a huge mess. How do I know this? Well, I've done that a time or two and it may happen this time. It, you never know. Sometimes it's the baking powder that gets it activated and it, it kind of takes off. So, you know, you don't want to overfill the waffle iron. So when you look at it and you think, Oh, that doesn't look like enough batter. It didn't fill it up. Well, it expands. Okay, now somebody's going to ask me about, um, did I grease the waffle iron? Did I put oil on it? Um, you know, I have to tell you that if you have, and let me see if there's a question here. Do you need to oil that? Someone did ask that question. Hi, Phil. Hi, Lori. Hi, Jill. Um, if you get a brand new waffle iron that's never been used and you use it for the first time non-stick, you never put anything in it, you shouldn't ever have to put any oil in it. However, if you've already owned the waffle iron, you've used it before and you've oiled it every time and then you try to use it without oiling it, it might not work. It might stick some. So um, if you have to oil it, if you feel like you're not going to be able to make your waffles unless you put a small amount of oil on it. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is you can spray it or brush it and then blot off all the excess or you can just go ahead and cook it and kind of peel the waffle off you know with the, your chopstick or whatever and just let it cool a little bit and sometimes it'll just peel off. So you just have to see what your waffle iron does. Not all of them are the same. Let's make sure there's no questions. So our pancake, it's turned out pretty good. It's brown on the other side as well. Um, the only way we're gonna know if it tastes good, and I'm gonna turn the skillet off, is when we get ready to eat the waffle, we'll try the pancake, but it looks fine. You know, it looks like a pancake. It uh, cooked all the way through. So I actually think you can use the waffle batter and make pancakes with it. Now, how are we gonna know when the waffle is done? Well, my waffle iron beeps when it's done, so that's 
you know, it'll tell me when it's done and we'll open it up and uh, we'll check on the waffle. As far as the compote, it's been cooking all this time and I can tell that the blueberries have broken down even more and there's very little liquid left. So pretty soon that's going to be completely done and we'll have our delicious syrup. So um, the unfortunate thing is there's nobody here at the house right now ready to eat. My husband's already eaten lunch. My son is out working outside. So these waffles and pancakes and things will be eaten tomorrow. And that's the other thing I want to talk about. Uh, this waffle recipe, <clears throat> the waffles that you make taste really good if you freeze them and heat them up in the air fryer. So I've had a lot of experience because I've taught this recipe in my breakfast classes. So we've, I've made this many times and sometimes I would have a lot of leftover waffle batter and just go ahead and make a bunch of waffles with it. Oh, hear that? It's beeping. And then I would put them in the freezer just in a you know Ziploc bag and then just grab one, heat it in the toaster oven, air fryer. You could heat it in the toaster oven, but the air fryer works really great. And then I would get this super crispy on the outside, moist on the inside, really delicious waffle. I see Lauren, my daughter-in-law's watching. Hopefully my grandsons are on there. I thought you guys were gonna come over and get your pictures taken in the blue bonnets. It's far away from the house. So if you do, if you decide to come over this afternoon, I'll leave you some freshly made waffles on the porch. Is that tempting? Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. I have a wooden skewer in case it sticks, but it didn't stick. And you're gonna see that I kind of underestimated the amount of batter to put in here. So my poor old waffle is not completely, completely round on the edges. So that's not the best looking waffle that I've ever made. It's kind of, uh, you know, it should be have a nice edge. So don't grade me on that waffle because that's kind of like a C waffle. Let's hopefully that maybe this one looks better. It's beeping, so this one's ready. Oh, see, now that one's stuck to the top. Oh, this one's a little bit better, but it still has... You know, this is how it's supposed to look, okay? All sides are supposed to look like this. They're not supposed to look like this, but you know, it's gonna taste really good. I guarantee you, no matter how it looks. But the thing about it is, you can't see this, but it's really crispy. The edges are nice and crispy. It's better to make a waffle that doesn't fill the pan that gets crispy on the edges than one that it's got too much batter and starts overflowing the pan because what will happen is it won't cook all the way through and it won't have that nice, you know, this one has a really nice kind of brown and crunch to it. So it did really well. Now compared to the pancake, here I'll put both the waffles on this plate for now. Um, looking at the pancake, the pancake doesn't look as appealing. You know, the pancake is just, you know, it doesn't look that great, but I bet it tastes just as good. So we're going to plate it up. Stick the pancake over here. I'm going to use the pretty one because, you know, chefs, we take pictures of all our food. So we want it to look really pretty. If we're going to have it in a picture, we don't want it to look ugly. Got to get stuff off the plate. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my compote off. And I'm going to scoop some up. Now, I think it would benefit from reducing down a little bit more. It's still a little bit runny for my taste, but it's, it's fine. So what we have here is we have this sweet blueberry sauce, and we have a delicious, crispy, nutty, walnutty, multigrain waffle. And we could put, if it wasn't sweet enough like this, which if my husband was eating it, he would say, oh no, it needs some sugar syrup. So he would pour maple syrup all over it. So let's see. We are moving slow today. The boys are watching. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. So how long in the air fryer? Well, when you're reheating this in the air fryer, it depends on your air fryer. And some air fryers can burn things in an instant. So I put mine on something like 325 and I put it in there and watch it. You know, I, I'll go back and check it after like four or five minutes 
and make sure that it's not burning. So I can't tell you the exact temperature or time. It just depends on your brand of air fryer. You're a lot safer toasting it in your toaster oven and, uh, or putting it back in a regular oven, but they do come out really well in the air fryer. So that's the waffle, and we have the pancake that we could have done the same thing to. And um, I'm you know, kind of curious to see how the pancake tastes <coughs> as a pancake. I know how the waffle tastes, but I want to kind of see the texture of this pancake. You know, is it light? Because I have never made the batter with the pancake. It's good. It, um, it's a little moist. It's not fluffy because the batter is pretty dense. So I probably should have cooked it a little bit longer because it's still a little moist. But it does taste really good. So I wouldn't say not to make this into pancakes. I would say that if you do it, make them thin so that they cook all the way through. Um, what can you eat with waffles and uh, plant-based things like this? Hi, Julia Buttermore. You probably came to the breakfast class and made this with me before. But um, what you could eat with the waffles is um, the plant-based sausage that I make. Somebody requested that. I make this really good plant-based sausage and it's made from um, oatmeal, like the, not the old fashioned oatmeal, but the quick oatmeal and brown rice and a bunch of seasonings that kind of taste like stuffing and then I mix it all together with vegetable broth, turn it into little patties, put them in the oven and, they, and fry them and it has liquid smoke. So it has all these different seasonings in it. And once the little plant-based sausage patties are cooked, you just brown them up in the skillet with a little bit of low sodium soy sauce so they turn dark brown. And they're amazingly good. Everybody that has them will say, oh, this, I can't believe this is what it is it tastes so much better so any questions i'll look and see if you have any questions i would love to see how to make the sausage as well bridget barber now that's a name from the past we used to work together at carswell <clears throat> and mary doyle moody thanks for watching yes um i have the sausage recipe on my list of things that people have requested so we'll definitely make that the sausage is awesome that's Tammy Morgan, yeah, Tammy is from Oklahoma. She's come here for classes all the way from Oklahoma. I missed seeing you, Tammy. I'm glad you're watching the video. We've had potlucks. We would have a potluck once a month. We didn't have one in March, and then, you know, of course we're probably not gonna have one in April. But we've been having potlucks where people would bring things and I would make something. And one time we had a breakfast themed potluck. And that was a lot of fun. And I'm gonna start those back up as soon as people can start getting together. Potlucks are awesome. So, um, <clears throat> any questions? Uh, I agree, the sausage is awesome. Yes, Pam, Pam Golnofsky came all the way from Maryland for a class. She ha has the record of coming the furthest from any place from Texas of anybody just for a class. I've had people come from other states, but they were here in this area for something else. So. Pam, I really appreciate you. Thanks for coming. I hope one day you can come to another class. Let's see, I know I've, I've had family, so I missed it. Yeah, sorry, Tammy, but we'll do it again. You know, things are gonna get back to semi-normal one day, we hope. Any recipe requests that you have, put them on this uh, video in the comments, and I will definitely try to make whatever it is you request. Um, making one recipe a day for me is not that hard. Uh, for those of you who've been to my classes, some of you are on there, somebody who's been to one of my classes, tell us how many recipes we've made in a class that you've attended. I'm just gonna see what you say. Somebody, how many recipes or how many different dishes did we make in a, a live cooking class? While I'm waiting, I'll tell you, sometimes we make seven, eight, nine different things in a class. So making one thing, uh, 10, yeah, we have made 10 things. So making one thing, thanks Phil, keep coming back. Making one thing is not that hard. 
uh, if I ever please start doing cooking classes again, which I know I will one day, I'm going to do some things differently to make it, uh, you know, to where people can feel comfortable about coming and use one-time use items for plates and silverware and, you know, I just, I have some ideas in mind. So if I ever get back to having live classes, I have a different way to do it. <clears throat> oh, I see my son is watching now too. PJ. Hi, PJ. I talked about how you and Richard improved the waffle recipe by adding extra walnuts to it. So I did add extra walnuts, and I can already tell you it's going to be awesome. And as soon as this video is off, let's see, John David, I want some pancakes. I told you, come over and get your pictures taken in the blue bonnets, and I'll put some on the porch. So if you have any recipe requests, send them to me, and I'll try to make them. And I'll try to keep these videos as um, quick and efficient as possible so that I'm not wasting your time. And if you want to share them, please do. It really has been heartwarming to see the number of people watching the videos and sending me positive messages. I've gotten messages from people in other states that have said that it's been um, uh, something to lift their spirits to have a live person doing something for them. So if, if there's anything about this that is in any way cheering you up, then it's worth it. So I'll keep doing them. It does keep me on my toes. It gives me something to do every day. I look forward to you having, please again, okay, I'll keep doing them. I mean, I'm here. I work out from my home. Uh, Lori Ellerton, thank you. Yes, thank you. And um, I consider it something that I'm, I'm learning a lot. So it's helping me because the more of these I do, hopefully I'm improving and one day Food Network is gonna call me. No, I don't wanna do anything on Food Network, I'm kidding. But I was thinking that if we go to a virtual kind of a reality where we do more things online, I could see myself doing some uh, cooking classes online now. Where before people would ask me all the time, Oh, would you do a cooking class online? And I would always say, no, no, I can't do that. I don't want to do it. So, yeah, that may change. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I'm going to close this down. Make sure there's no last-minute questions. Something I look forward to every day. We appreciate you. What kind of waffle maker, again, um, it's a Cuisinart. So I'll put it to where you can see it. It's just a Cuisinart Belgian waffle maker. Yeah, Phil, YouTube. My granddaughter was always telling me to become a YouTuber, and I've made some YouTube videos, but there's something about, you know, my age group, I just don't think I'm a YouTube star material, so I'll just keep doing my Facebook Live videos and just go from there. So thank you guys for watching, and make these waffles for Sunday breakfast. I think you'll be happy you did. So take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not sure what we're making yet, but I've got some ideas in mind. So, see you tomorrow. John David, you can do anything yet, my son.